Hello and welcome to Verbal to Visual. My name is Doug Neal, and today I'm going to be sharing some takeaways from the book Company of One by Paul Jarvis. And maybe more importantly, I'm going to be sharing my follow-up action plan, the ways in which I'm going to attempt to put into practice the things that I learned from this book. Along the way, I'll share some sketch notes that I took of the ideas from this book, and also kind of a visual representation of the action plan that I've made for myself. And it's the creation of this action plan in particular that I hope is a takeaway for you in terms of how you might take the ideas that you read in a book or listen to in a podcast. And rather than just capturing the highlights from that information source, I think more important is putting those ideas into action. That's what I try to emphasize here while teaching these visual note-taking skills skills, that it's not about creating a pretty picture. It's about bridging that gap between ideas and action. So let's get into how I'm attempting to do that with the book that I recently read, Company of One by Paul Jarvis. While reading the book, I underlined the passages that stood out to me and sometimes added my own notes in the margin. I then went through each chapter and tried to pull out on a single page the most important ideas from that chapter. It's in this stage that I started to bring in some sketch noting skills, creating some simple sketches or diagrams connected to those important ideas. And after completing all of those one pagers, I then went in with two different highlighters to do one more layer of filtering. A yellow highlighter to circle the one or two most important ideas from each chapter, and then a pink one to circle the particular follow-up actions that I knew I wanted to take. So here's how those chapter summaries and follow-up highlighting turned out. The basic premise of this book, and the definition of a company of one, is simply a business that questions growth, and even resists growth if there's a better, smarter way forward. And for me, the key idea within the first chapter was throwing more at any given problem likely won't solve it. So it's about becoming better instead of growing bigger. And I appreciated here the emphasis on your current audience because too often businesses forget about the current audience and instead chase new leads and other areas of growth instead of customer success. So for me, that reinforced the need to be making regular course improvements in my case, since what I do here is build online courses that teach these sketchnoting skills. Also within that realm, of not more but better, this question here, do we really need to rush our workers and ourselves to work longer hours to see better results, or do we just need to get better at working the same amount or less? This will be a focus for me, as you'll soon see in my action plan. There's some recurring themes here about customer success, in this case, that it's the cornerstone of a profitable company of one. Here's an idea that's not going to make it into my action plan, but I might try to do something with later because it touches on a couple of big ideas like mastery and passion, mainly being that the order in which these develop is it starts with engaging work, which requires four things, clearly defined assignments, tasks you excel at, performance feedback, and work autonomy. And engaging work is what leads to mastery, which is what leads to passion. That it goes in that order and it doesn't start with passion. I think that's a referral refreshing take. Jarvis touches on personality and how helpful it can be to become a beacon for those who are like you by taking a stand. And as a company of one, what you're really doing is selling your way of thinking as much as you would a commodity. And I like the idea here of not being the vanilla ice cream of your industry, but instead the pistachio ice cream. How it's okay if people either love it or hate it. And in my case, I see some ways of improving what I'm doing in those areas. Again, back to customer success here. The idea that loyal customers are worth 10 times their first purchase. And that when your customers win, you do too. There's some talk about scalable systems, which helped me identify some improvements that I can make to some automated email sequences. The idea here of teaching everything you know and how out teaching and out sharing is the way 
that you can stand out above the competition. And in my case, it's this piece about consumer education that was really helpful and where I can see some room for improvement. And in terms of building trust and utilizing scale, it's also within those automated systems that I think I can seek some better feedback than what I'm currently on the lookout for. More on that in a second. Jarvis focuses on launching quickly and iterating in tiny steps with a key idea here that every minute spent working on a new product is a minute that you're not selling it and you're not seeing how well it solves someone's problem. With the idea here that you can really only focus on growth or you can focus on profit. It's nearly impossible to do both at the same time. He also talks about the importance of relationships and how as a company of one, you have the opportunity to get to know your customers by name, by need, and by motivation. How there's the opportunity to build long-term relationships with your audience members. And for me, this makes me want to seek out more customer success stories. As Jarvis talked about his own story of creating a company of one. I like the point that working for yourself requires ego and purpose in equal measure. Ego along the lines of, I know I can do this better, and purpose knowing what your North Star is that drives you in the long term. And for Jarvis, it's freedom of choice. Also some helpful financial tips here that I'm looking forward to following up on, especially getting an accountant. So a company of one isn't necessarily a one person company, though in my case it is. Instead, it's more about that first idea of questioning growth, growth in commitments, growth in team members, growth in products, which is a helpful thing for me because I tend to like to start new projects and build new products maybe more frequently than I should. So with that as a quick overview of some of the highlights of that book, also I hope it was helpful seeing the way in which I take really rough notes from each chapter. Again, notes don't have to be pretty in order to be useful. Let me now lay out the follow-up action plan that I've created for myself to put some of these ideas into practice. For me, one of the overarching themes to the work that I do each week and something that was reinforced by reading this book is the idea of seeking out and maintaining a sustainable pace of work. This fits well within the better, not more theme. And for me, there are two primary chunks of time each day during which I get my work done. The first chunk is from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. That's when I get my best work done. And the second chunk is from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. During that afternoon session, I'm not quite as fresh, but I still want to get important work done. And I tend to block out each of those time chunks for specific tasks. During that morning session, that's when I focus on making these videos each week. That's the content marketing piece of my business plan. And with the videos that I make here, I've been alternating between two different styles, a more behind the scenes type video, and then a how-to video. With the BTS videos, I focus on a particular sketchnoting project that I'm working on, like sketchnoting a book, for example, and making a follow-up action plan. And then the how-to videos focus on a specific aspect of sketchnoting, where I try to share a handful of tips that I hope you're able to put into practice right away. In the afternoon session, I focus on two different tasks. The first is what I used to call customer support, but based on what I just read in Company of One, I like reframing that as customer success. For me, that's a helpful mindset shift because in some ways, customer support feels a little bit like a drag, but facilitating customer success gets me closer to the ultimate purpose behind my work. And for the most part, what that looks like is responding to emails and keeping an eye on social media so that I can provide some helpful one-on-one -on -one feedback. Within that afternoon work session, I also focus on long-term projects. And at any given time, there's always Always one and only one long-term project that I'm working on. And those projects fall into two different categories, either improving current products, products that I've already made, or building new ones. And what I'm trying to do right now is have a helpful balance of both going back and forth between maintaining and improving something I've already made and building something new. 
So this here is a framework that I've had in place for a while now, and this is a system that's kind of slowly developed over the past five or six years. So let me next add in the specific follow-up actions that were inspired by the book Company of One. One of the things that Jarvis talks about is consumer education, teaching your audience about the particular industry in which you work or teaching them about the specific products or services that you offer to help them be a better informed consumer. And where I see room for improvement in my own work is highlighting interesting articles about learning in general and the benefits of visual note taking in particular. It feels like once a month or so there's a new article that comes out in a well-known publication that talks about the benefit of doodling, of sketchnoting, of graphic recording. And I feel like digging into those articles and even sketchnoting the results could be a great thing to weave into those BTS videos. That will give me the opportunity to take a deep look at those articles and also share the results with you in a way that is hopefully helpful. So I feel like this can serve two purposes, one being the consumer education piece before folks maybe become a customer of mine when they purchase an online course. But then I also think that these can facilitate customer success because once the benefits of visual note taking and certain aspects about learning that we've come to know and understand. The more that that's in place when folks enter an online course of mine, I think the more likely they are to get something out of that course and put those ideas into action themselves. This book also helped me identify some places where I think I can improve my existing products and even more generally showed the value in making those improvements in a way that increases the likelihood of customer success. Specifically, I see some improvement within the email welcome and check-in series that is triggered anytime someone purchases an online course of mine. There are some good things that are already in place there, but I think I can do a little bit more to set up new customers for success as they start that online course and seek out specific feedback and suggested improvements and also reach out to ask for customer success stories. So there were some specific ideas and tactics that Jarvis talked about that I'm excited to implement there. And then two other improvements that I already had in mind but am now excited to carry out. One is to add English subtitles to every single video lesson within my online courses and also create full PDF transcripts with sketch noted images to make it easier for folks to review those lessons after watching the video version. And one thing that I started experimenting with this past summer and plan to continue with are course specific webinars. So over the summer I chatted with teachers who are using my resource kit sketch noting in the classroom. We're going to have a few more follow ups there. One webinar in October and then another in December or January to support those teachers during during the school year. And then in the future, I plan to continue having those specific webinars, but for different courses that I offer. And I think those serve the three purposes that I mentioned above of helping customers succeed, also providing an opportunity for feedback and suggested improvements, and also a helpful place for me to hear customer success stories. And one final idea that I wanted to bring in here connected to this idea of a sustainable pace is the creation of a stop doing list. Identifying those things that are holding you back to using your time well so that you can focus not on working more hours, but working better hours. That's helpful for me as I focus in on these two time chunks in particular, that morning session from seven to 10, and then the afternoon one from one to four, if those hours are spent well, there is plenty of time to make the things that I'm excited to make and help the people that I hope benefit from the resources that I put out there. And in this specific case here, I hope it was helpful to see what my action plan looks like as a follow-up to reading a book that I found to be valuable. In this case, it was helpful to kind of zoom out and look at my working system as a whole and identify a few specific places where there might be room for improvement and sketch all of that out in a way that feels actionable, where those improvements feel like they're achievable. 
So this plan here is now going to go up on my office wall in front of my desk so that I can reference it in the weeks to come. And then likely in a month or two, once these habits become routine, once I've made some of these updates here, I'll be able to take this action plan down and put a new one up connected to the next book that I read. And if you're intrigued by what I've done here, I encourage you to do something similar with the books that you read to help you put those ideas into practice. And if you'd like a bit more support in developing the visual note-taking skills to help you make that transition from ideas to action, then check out the courses that I've referenced here. A great place to start is my course, An Introduction to Visual Note-Taking. And if you happen to be building your own company of one, I encourage you to check out one of our course bundles called The Online Entrepreneur. That bundle will help you first develop your sketchnoting skills and then do some helpful storytelling with them. You can find links to that resource and others down below. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your next sketchnoting project and I'll talk to you again in the next video. Till then.